life! Anton Lavoisier came back from the dead and rose an entire army of T-Rexes and plans to take over the entire country of Uruguay. We must rally the freedom fighters and take over the moon so that marshmallows can rain down on the fairy kingdom. Speaking of stuff not making any sense, let's talk about bleach, shall we? Okay, so look, I like Bleach. I can stand Bleach. It's not my favorite series, it's not my least favorite series. It's about a good six or seven on the teching scale. I know that's really kind of shocking to some people when you consider my entire YouTube career is based around Bleach reviews. But it's, it, it, that's where I would put it on my, on my little chart, okay? And I do, I have a certain love for this series. I have a certain sentimentality for it. I'm going to stick with it until the end. And, you know, I, I, I make fun of Kubo sometimes for the weird plot twist, like the whole Zongetsu thing, which actually makes more sense than I actually think about it. But, you know, it's all in good fun. Except for the whole Toshiro thing, but... So here's basically the thing, though. There's stuff that happens in this series, just like every other series, that makes no damn sense. At all. And I'm not talking about plot holes. I'm not talking about stuff that Kubo might reveal later on, like, oh, what's so what's, uh, Ukitaki's Bankai, or, you know, why is Yuha Bok so pissed off at the Sora? I'm, like, no, I'm not talking about stuff like that. Like, that stuff is going to be revealed. I'm talking about just completely out there stuff that's probably never going to get an explanation, or is way past due for an explanation, or is just completely broken, some kind of deus ex machina, something like that. So with that all being said, I've compiled a list of five things that fit that description. So, here we go, with the top five things that make no damn sense in Bleach. Number five, Yoroichi's cat form. Yeah, okay, so in case you forgot, because she hasn't done this in a long time, but Yoroichi Shihoing, former captain of the second division and the stealth force, is able to transform into a black cat at will. We do not know how she's capable of doing this. No other character in this series comes close to even resembling even a modicum of this kind of ability. We have no idea. And you know what? No matter... Like, I'm, I'm sitting there at this at my desk, and I'm, I'm trying to rack my brain, trying to come up with some explanation as to how how this works for her. Like, maybe, okay, maybe it's some type of gee guy. Maybe that makes sense. If it was, like, a gee guy that was a cat, and she just had a thing for cats, so she decided to, you know, go in her gee guy that's a cat, that would make sense, except for the fact that she can turn into a cat at will. She doesn't need a gee guy. You know, she can just be in a cat form, and then she transforms back in her regular form, which is naked in the process, so that even clarifies the fact it's not a gee guy. Um, you know, you could say, is it a type of keto? But we've never seen a keto, you know, transmutation keto we've never even had that even mentioned before that seems more of like a hogwarts type deal but we never even had that before um you know you, you can't even really say it was something like i even i even started thinking like maybe it was something urahara came up with it you know maybe like when they were when they went in exile from after the whole visor in issue a uh, hundred years ago and threw back the pendulum maybe urahara came up with some sort of a uh, device to turn her into a cat but that still doesn't make any sense because um, way back in Turn Back the Pendulum, before the whole Aizen thing happened, uh, Byakuya, when he was younger, called uh, Yoroichi a werecat, or, you know, something to that effect. So, the, 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 no the knowledge that she could turn into a black cat was clearly known in the Soul Society well before the whole exile thing. So, you know, it, it's something like, it's on the same level of Komomura, which I didn't put Komomura on this list because I actually think Kubo is going to reveal, you know, why he's a dog, or maybe why the dog species exists in the Seireite, or what their role is in the history there. Uh, but I just don't think he's ever going to reveal why she can turn into a cat. I think that's just one of the things, like, you ever bring that up to a guy in the Bleach fandom, he's just like, oh, well, it's just in the sea, you just gotta deal with it. You can't, you can't be nitpicking. I'm like, this is not nitpicking! This is a big deal! She's the only person that's ever been shown to do this! So yeah, Yoroichi cat form, you know, the only possible explanation I can gather from this, and this doesn't even make any sense, is that it's something, like some special ability that just her clan can do. Her clan is one of the four great noble families, the Shihoin family, so maybe, I mean, but even, I mean, we've never seen anybody else in the Shihoin family, so maybe they could all do it. That's a bit, that's a bit of an issue there, just saying. Alright, so number four. Anything pertaining to the backstory of Ginjo Kujo, the main villain in the uh, Substitute Shinigami, uh, the Lost Substitute Shinigami arc. So, okay, so here's the thing with Ginjo. 
He was revealed to be the main villain pretty much near the end of the arc. And then we had a big final climactic showdown with Ichigo and Ginjo after Ginjo stole his full brain powers. And, you know, he's all beefed up and he's got his bong kai and he's fighting against Ichigo. And they're having that internal monologue, you know. He's like, I was a substitute Shinigami before you. You know, they betrayed me. You know, what would you do if I were my shoes, Ichigo? And then Ichigo just cuts him down and he dies. But here's the thing. We know nothing about this guy's past. It's kind of hard for me to feel sympathy for him, and I really think that's what Kubo was going for, because when they were fighting against Ichigo, he was like, he was having this like inner monologue, this torment that's going on in his head, and the guy is really messed up mentally, but we don't know why. We don't have any drive for it. We do not know how Ginjo Kujo became a substitute Shinigami. You could just go off on a limb and say, oh, okay, he was born with the full brain powers because his mother was attacked by a hollow. It doesn't have to be the whole issue like what happened with Ichigo's birth, but we can understand how he became a full brainer. But we don't know how he became a substitute Shinigami. Was it the same thing with uh, Rukia? Did a Shinigami stab him and transfer their powers? Was it some other method? Um, you know, did he kill a Shinigami and steal his powers somehow? You know, uh, okay, so that's just one thing, though. Like, uh, how did he... But, you know, that's another thing. How did he lose his powers? How did he lose his Shinigami powers? You know, was he becoming... Like, I, I guess the Shinigami want to uh, find out where he was. I guess he was kind of an enemy of the state. But how is that uh, backstory related to the whole present? How does that come, like, and come back and connect to Ichigo? Um... What's his relationship with Tsukushima? You know, we had that one panel, that one damn panel. That's all we got with his past with Tsukushima. Oh, you're not alone anymore. And he meets him behind a tree and he's all crying and they have each other. And, you know, that even more doesn't make any sense when you think that the last line that Tsukushima had before he died was like, you know, Ija Ginjo, I love you, man. And then he's just like, I understand what, it, what you meant now, Ginjo. That would have been a hundred times more impactful if we just had one chapter. I'm not talking like a turn back the pendulum deal. I'm just talking about one chapter. Or hell, you could have done what you did with the other Fullbringers. Just have like two panels of their past. That would have been more. Because their past, like, even Ryuruka went on a spiel about how, oh, Ginjo saved all of us. He kept us all, you know, he rallied us all together. And he made us feel like we're not alone or we're not freaks anymore. You know, just have a little bit of backstory with that. You know, I'm just saying the guy, the guy's mystery. Now, you might be saying, like, okay, he's still around because he's in the Shinigami, he's in the Soul Society. He's probably going to fight against the Von Reich in some way. So, maybe whenever he fights against the Stern Riders or whatever, then that's when Kubo's going to do his backstory. Little bit too late for that. Too too little too late. I'm sorry. Because all the impact his character had, the the, the point when he was the main character of the arc was the last arc. Was the fake was the uh not the fake arc or time. The uh, lost Shinigami substitute arc. That's when he was a big deal. He might show up again and he might fight a stern raider and he might have a backstory then, but you know what? I don't care. Because all that shit that was going on, like chapter by chapter, the emotion was building. That's all gone. That's in the rearview mirror. That's in the dusty trail behind me. I don't really care about his character now, even if they did reveal a backstory. You missed off on the chance when you had the chance, Kubo. It would have only taken one chapter, if done well, and we got nothing. So, yeah. And also, not even with his backstory, just the question of how his powers work was also something that doesn't make any freaking sense with this character. Like, okay, so he's a human with full brain powers. Then he becomes a Shinigami. Then he loses his Shinigami powers. Then he's just back to being a human with full brain powers. Then he steals Ichigo's full brain. But wait, no, because he still has a Bonkai. So wait, is that entire time he was fighting against Ichigo, was he still in human form or was he in soul form? I guess he's in human form because when he died, his soul went to the Soul Society, but they also took his body to the Soul Society, but then they returned it. I just, I, I don't get that. I just, I don't. I'm like, is he in human body, but he has a Bonkai? I mean, that, that, I'm just trying to get my head around that alone because that doesn't make any sense, but okay. I, I just don't get a lot of stuff with this character, and Kubo did crap for explaining it. So, yeah, Ginjo Kujo. I hope when you show up next in the story, you'll make some sense, bro, because honestly, I don't get you. Next up, we have number three. Number three and number two both pertain to the fake arc Kurten arc. You know I had to include two things from that arc on this freaking list, right? Alright, so the first one is going to include Aizen and his whole method on invading. And number two is going to be the Soul Society's method for invading because this was the most poorly thought out war on both sides. All right, before we get into the thick of it, let me just give you a little bit of the setup, okay? Aizen has this big, huge subterfuge in the Soul Society. He kills the entire Central 46, he steals the Hogyoku, he ascends with Tozen and Gin into the Hueco Mundo, and he plans to use the Hogyoku to break, break down the boundary between Hollow and Shinigami and create an entire army of Aronkar hybrids in order to attack the um, Vaikara Kuratan Ark in order to obtain the Oaken, to overthrow the Soul King and become God. That is a pretty awesome setup 
for an arc of a shonen manga. Do you not think so? Eyes and Storm's fake Karakura Town, he has an entire legion of Aronkars behind him. He's just like, to battle! You know? Well, guess what? He doesn't. He invades the town with about ten Aronkars. Those are including three of the Espada. Oh yeah, right, the Espada, the top ten most gifted and most strongest warriors that you have at your disposal, and you only bring three of them to fake Karakura Town. So, that's the other thing you're probably thinking about right away. It's like, well, you know, he probably would have brought more Espada into the world of the living if Ichigo and his friends did not kill most of them while they were in Wakamundo. Because Chad took out, uh, well no, Chad didn't, wait, did Chad kill an Espada? No, he didn't. That sucks. So, you know, Rukia took out Aranyero. Uh, Mayori, with Ryu and Renji's assistance, took out uh, Sile. Zomri was taken out by Akia. Grimjaw was taken out by Ichigo, although he doesn't kill him, he just got taken out. And Oitoro was taken out by uh, Kenpachi. So all you have left is uh, Ukiora, who he left in charge of uh, Lost Noches, and then the top three. So that's the reason he didn't bring him. Okay, here's the thing, though. There were only, at this point, there were only six captains in the entire Seireite that could fight against Aizen. Now, granted, Aizen was way stronger than all of them, we found that out later, but wouldn't it make more sense to invade a town knowing that there's going to be, you know, there's going to be resistance there? There's going to be at least six captains standing guard waiting for you to attack. Don't you think that bringing ten of your soldiers with you would be, like, your ten most elite soldiers would have, like, uh, better bets on you winning? So, here's what he could have done. Here's what he easily could have done. As soon as Ichigo and his friends broke into the freaking Wakamundo and they started scurrying around Lost Noches, these little piss ants in his domain, Aizen should have been like, okay, fuck this. Fuck this, you know, like, one-on-one -on -one fight deal. F screw this, you know, our, like, our, every Espada has one enemy or, like, one or two enemies. Screw this. Gein, Tozen, let's go and freaking kill these guys so we don't lose our fighting force, you know? Aizen, shoot, he could have wiped out Renji, Uryu, Chad, Rukia so damn easily. Even Gein and Tozen could have done that so damn easily, you know? It wouldn't even been a contest. You know, these guys come in the enemy territory, they get mowed down. You know, now Ichigo's the only exception there, but, you know, they could have easily kept him locked in Hueco Mundo with no way out. You know, there you go, you still have all ten Espada. There you go, invade. Um, you know, it wasn't until the captains show up, which, by the way, the captains are going to be another thing I'm going to get into on the on the Soul Society side of the spectrum, because that was a stupid thing to do. Send, your send, four, send an entire... Um, third of your fighting force, of your already cut down fighting force, to the enemy territory just to kind of jerk off while you have an actual fight going on in the world of the living. Yeah, that's yeah, that makes a lot of sense, right? But it's just like not even that. Okay, not even that. So you have the Espada wiped out. He still doesn't even have ha half the Aronkar. I mean, granted, your standard Aronkar, your standard Numeros, is not going to pose a, a big threat to a captain. But you have to remember, it's more of a quantity over quality sort of thing in this situation. If you have the fighting power, you know, if you send like six or seven numeros on one lieutenant, the lieutenant's probably going to go down. I mean, they, they barely went down when they were fighting one-on-one -on -one for the Battle of the Pillars. You know what I'm saying? So if, if you brought like all the Aronkars you said you had, apparently he had close to a hundred, because wasn't Wanderweiss like number, wasn't Wanderweiss like in the 90s of creation? Wasn't he like the last one made? So therefore you would have like at least a good, I knew there were no Maros at least in the 50s and the 60s. So you would at least have that many as just a just a garrison, just a fighting force, just a frontline fighter to kind of trim the herd. I mean, yeah, the captains could probably take those on, but if you had so many of these guys at once, it would greatly increase your fighting strength. You know, you could be saying like, oh, well, Eisen was just so badass, he didn't need all that. You know, I, I, I don't believe that. I just, I, it, 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 it's not even about Eisen's ego. It's more about, you know, we were expecting this big epic fight, and this is what we get. And also the thing that, uh, the, the, the uh, whole leaving Ukiora in Lost Noches, I know Aizen wanted to, Ukiora to fight against Ichigo to kind of increase Ichigo's power so Ichigo could pose a threat against Aizen, because Aizen has this weird self-destruction kind of, you know, subconscious thing going on here. But why do you need to leave any of your fighting forces in Lost Noches? If your plan is successful, and you actually create the Oaken, and you overthrow the Soul King, you're probably not going to go back to the fucking desert. You're probably just going to stay in your on your throne and just reign over everything, you know? So... You, you, like, abandon Lost No Chase. What, what do you care? You're not coming back there, you know? So to this day, we can always sit back and wonder and just, just, just question. Wait, Eisen had an army? Yeah, funny. All right, so number two. This is on the Soul Society spectrum. This is on the stuff what they did with this invasion. Okay, so 13 captains. Strongest warriors you got in the Soul Society. Three of them defect. I'm like, okay. So this is a big blow for us. We just lost a fourth of our fighting strength. And then there's going to be this big war, because he has an army. Well, at this point, they think he has an army. 
of Aron cars in a spot. Of Raya, each Espada is at least equal or semi-equal in level of, uh, to a captain, which they were at the end of the day. They were semi level of the captains and um you know you say figure okay so we need to leave soul we need to leave shinigami in the soul society unlike lost noches the soul society needs to be continuously run you can't just take all your soldiers all right so it would make sense why you would only take your lieutenant and captain level soldiers but here's the thing that doesn't make any sense why would you send your four main with one of which being your healer and one of which being your captain that is specializing in combat to Hueco mundo to save Ichigo's friends, you might say. Yes, that makes sense in a storytelling perspective, but not in an actual battle war perspective. Especially when Yamamoto said, after Orihime got kidnapped, hey, guess what? We're not going to send anyone to help her. We need people to help for this freaking war. We don't care about your, you know, your princess in a tower. You know, have fun with that if you want to, but we're going we're gonna to stay out of this. He, like, I think Kenpachi said something like, uh, Uohara had to design the Gargantas so they could support captain-level... Uh, Riatsu or captain level uh, members of the Gote so they could go through the Gargantua. Why? I'm like, okay, I can understand after cleaning up, like you want to invade the enemy's fortress after you defeated the enemy and do a little bit of recon, but after that point, you wait till the battle's over, dude. You know, they, kn they knew exactly when this was going to happen. When Aizen invaded the World of the Living, the, the Shigami were already there. They knew when they were going to show up. They planned this with the with the Senkaimon gates, the Tenkai Ketchu. They planned this. They knew when Aizen was going to show up, and they were ready for him. You know, so this isn't like a case of you know you go to the um, you go to Hueco Mundo, and then we'll have another month to plan for the actual battle. No, it was more like you go to Hueco Mundo, and then we're going to go fight. You know, so we're going to cut our you're going to cut our uh, attack strength even more down. So you can go and save, you know, three or four people. Meanwhile, we're going to fight against people that could end the entire planet. Doesn't make, like, why Udahana? He's like, yeah, send Udahana to Huecamundo so she can heal, like, five people. Meanwhile, we have a war going on here. And the only, the only medic in the entire freaking Soul Society that they brought with them to, Hueca, to fake Karakura Town to fight was Izuru Kira, who had a little bit of medical experience a long time ago in the 4th Division. I mean, that's like, if you're going to have an army platoon go over to Iraq, you have nobody that's a medic except the one guy that took, like, AP health in, like, college that one time, like, five years ago. He's like, oh, don't worry, guys. I, I'm a little bit rusty, but I got this. I'm just going to treat this burnt stump here you have for an arm after you get shot with a freaking RP, RPG at close range. Yeah, okay. Oh, wait, no, he's dead. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm just kind of a sucky medic, you know? I haven't done this in a while, you know? That's all they brought, you know, you don't have to have the medics on the front line. It doesn't have to be like Naruto with the medic ninja, you know, having to have, having, uh, fighting abilities, you know? You have Keto, you have a shit ton of barrier techniques. You could just, hey, okay, you guys, stand behind the barrier, you medics, just stay down there, we're gonna protect you with the Keto corpse, which, yeah, remember the Keto corpse? Yeah, the Keto corpse, yeah, what happened to them? You're gonna have the Keto corpse down there, we're gonna have you guarding you with a bunch of shit of barriers, and then, you know... We'll have this real intricate thing so when you get carried away, you can be healed so nobody dies here. You know, something like that. Be actually clever. My God, you the Soul Society is designed out of like a feudalistic Japan, you know, samurai motive thing going on. You think you might have a little bit more of attack strategies than just, let's all show up at this fight and beat this guy a lot and hope he goes away crying, you know? I don't get it. I do not get it. That was the, and, and, you know, I didn't even get to the pacing in the fake Harakura Town arc. You know, the pacing alone is just, is just abysmal. But, you know, that's just the stuff on both sides of the spectrum I never understood. You know, about, that doesn't make any sense. You know, the, the way the Soul Society planned that war out was terrible, and the way Aizen planned that war out was terrible. So at the end of the day, they're both terrible. I guess it equals out. But, man, just, man. Okay, so here we go. The last thing on this list of complete absurdity. The number one thing in Bleach makes no sense is Orihime Inoue's powers. And here we go. First, before we even get into this, let me just say one thing. Just in case you're planning on writing your own manga someday, or in case you're planning on writing out some sort of um, story that involves characters with, with special abilities, let me just say one thing. Do not give your character the ability to reverse time. You know why? Because either it's going to... There's only two things that can happen after you give the person to... to uh, you know, after you give ability to reverse time to somebody. Number one, that person's going to become a god. Or number two, that person is either going to become very broken. You know? Because, like, look, let's look at... Um, 
Let's look at uh, old Tear from Fairy Tale. She has the ability to reverse time, but only with uh, non. Like, at least in her regard, I'll give Fairy Tale some credit. At least in her regard, there was a limit on her power. She couldn't reverse uh, organic matter. It had to be inorganic matter. So at least that makes sense. But even with uh, Minerva, not Minerva, even with old Tear, it was just like ultimate time reversing magic. Last ages only. Oh, it's only one minute. So all that time that I had the ability to reverse time, it's only amounted to one minute, and then I turned into an old lady. Yeah, it's just like, okay, it's going to be like, later on, they're going to be broken. Because if you have a character that can reverse time, you know, every time somebody gets hurt, it's just going to be like, holy crap, Ichigo just got blown in half. Oh, oh okay, we got Orihime. We got Orihime. Okay, it's fixed. Okay, he beats Ukiyor. Holy shit, Ichigo got his head blown off. Oh, wait, 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 okay, hold on. We have Orihime. Wow, that's handy. So that's the reasoning, because um, when Aizen first stated, like, oh, this isn't healing, this isn't hyper-healing or anything like this, this is the ability to literally reject things. She's literally reversing the flow of time itself in a localized area. This is the power of a god. And, you know, so then, but then we have the, the scenes when it doesn't work. You know, where her power is set off to be something so, so, um, just omnipotent and amazing. And then we have scenes like, oh, well, Okiora just stabbed through Ichigo's chest, and Orihime is like, oh, I can't heal this because the Riatsu is too, you know, clustered in this wound. I can't reverse it. And, like, it's not about healing. If you have the true ability to reverse time, then you should be able to just reverse the flow of Riatsu. This isn't, this isn't just like, oh, it's, it's, it, if it was just basic healing abilities, I can understand. That's what they should have kept it as. Just accelerated healing, and then just write around the script around that. Maybe not have Grimjow's arm get blown off if Orihime couldn't heal it later on. Something like that. But, I mean, like, when her powers were first introduced, and it's like, okay, so you have an attack ability, you have a shielding ability, and you have a healing ability. Okay, you can build on that, you can gain new powers, even though she's the only one in the entire main clique of people that hasn't gained a power increase. Wait, no, she gained that one when she fought against Ginjo, that rejection, that Soteng Kishun rejection thing. But that's like the only time she got an entire upgrade in her powers in the entire, like, 300 chapters. Way to go, Koobs. But... It's just like, okay, so you have that, and then you have the other time when he got blasted through Sarah Oscuris, and, and Orihime couldn't heal that. Um, and then Orihime is just like, oh, yeah, don't even bother, your powers won't be able to save him. Like, yes, they should. If they can literally reverse time, then they should. Her powers are emotionally based, you could say. You could say, oh, well, if she's way too distraught, she won't be able, her Riatsu won't be able to function properly. But, once again, she's in love with Ichigo. You know, so when he gets a hole blown through his, her ch his chest, she should be like, oh, I want to save my beloved. And that should, her power should work even more in that circumstance. You know, it's just, it doesn't, don't give a character powers to reverse time. You know, and I could stand here and I could bitch and moan about Orihime's character even more, but I think just leave it at that. You know, we had that, it's like there were so much lost opportunities in that arc. In the Wake of Mundo arc, when she's like, "Oh, I'm going to use my powers to reverse the, the, the reverse the flow of time and erase the Hokyoku from his," never happens. Last time that thing was even now, last time that was even mentioned was when she said it. Like she had that inner monologue, "I'm going to get rid of the Hokyoku." Never does it. Never attempts to do it. Never does it. You know, and at the end of the day, when she thinks she's going to become such a more, you know, uh, independent character and she's going to really become strong, at the end of the day, she's just like, Oh, Ichigo, no, save me! You know, that's all it comes down to at the end. And then we haven't got a... Like, that was, like, the one opportunity for her character to gain any kind of development, you know, that wasn't in her chest. And, uh, yeah, at the end of the day, she didn't, she didn't get any of it. She just got reversed back to her regular character, and she's probably not going to have much in this arc either, because this arc's not going to focus on her for Jack Diddley. So, yeah, uh, that's my one thing there about, uh, about, uh, about Bleach that I just don't find any makes any sense. You know, Orihime's time reversal powers that only sometimes reverse time. So, yeah, I uh, hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you guys enjoyed the new Halloween setup I got going on here. And, uh, yeah, so... Techie101 signing out, guys.